they say there's nothing nicer than a glass of wine or a nice cold beer after a long day. New research shows that despite tougher economic times, Australians are drinking more, but we're choosing a cheaper drop. Steve Wooten has been following the trends and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Steve. Thanks for having me. Were you surprised by this research? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the biggest stats that came out of our research was that 60-odd uh, percent said to us that they're actually uh, increasing their consumption of alcohol uh, in recent times. So that's an amazing stat. Nearly two in, yeah, nearly two in three people, uh, in fact, uh, ramping up their consumption what? of alcohol. Why? Um, I think, you know, I think Australians are doing it tough, make no mistake of that, with uh, rising interest rates and uh, petrol prices increasing. Um, the cost of living is increasing, shopping bills, that sort of stuff. Um, I think also that alcohol is a bit ingrained in Australian it's society. It's a staple, in other yeah, words. Yeah, and, and uh, rightly or wrongly, it's part of our society. And uh, I think a lot of uh, consumers and a lot of uh, uh, people out there use alcohol as a bit of a crutch at times. I was about to say, is it a stress reliever? Yeah, I'd suggest so. And, and um, another stat that came out in our research was that uh, one in three people told us they're actually budgeting uh, for increased consumption of alcohol in their weekly family budgets, which, uh, which is an amazing statistic. That is extraordinary. So people, that, especially those on lower incomes, that means they're going without something else to make sure that they've got enough money to buy booze. Yeah, and or they're buying smarter. So and mm. it, uh, one of the things that came out of our survey as well was that... Uh, the clean the, skins and things like that, I yeah, guess. Sure. Yeah, sure. And, and, and the, the number one determinant for uh, purchasing of wine was uh, price. So if you go back some time, uh, people, you could argue that taste was the number one determinant of why you buy a yeah, bottle of wine. Yeah, quality or yeah, food sure. matching or something like that. Yeah, well, the interesting on that part that uh, in the survey, food matching, I suppose it's been a trendy part of uh, alcohol, um, came very, very low on our yeah, consumption. Yeah, 7%. Seven percent, and I think region was somewhere around five, if I remember my, my stats right. But, uh, so price is number one. Price is number one, and it was a clear number one with uh, taste being number mm. two. So. Um, so on the household budget, we might be um, um, not so much tightening, tightening our belts on, on our spend, but actually buying smarter. And you're saying women are doing more of the buying of the cheaper one. Is that because they pretty much control the, the purse strings? Because we're smart buyers. Or, well, yeah, I'm not going to... I'm just <laughs> asking you the question. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's uh, an amazing study again, and it's a bit of a stereotype. I think one of the things that came out was that men, in fact, uh, are more inclined to buy a bottle of wine over $20. Um, that might be us blokes, uh, chest beating and all that sort of stuff, and a bit of bravado on, uh, on our wine purchasing. Women but are more practical. Oh, yeah, and I think um, what Kim just said before is right. Possibly, uh, and not possibly, I think uh, more than possibly that uh, women are smarter consumers. Um, you can get a great value and great tasting bottle of wine for under $20 in Australia, make no mistake sure of that. Can. So It's interesting, isn't it, when you look at the alcohol tax, because that was designed to curb, you know, particularly the alco pops. I mean, it's really mm. on the, it's just on the alco pops, this increase. Ha has that done anything at all to decrease the amount that we're, that we're drinking in terms of the alco pops? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't it in fact, in part of our research, but I've seen anecdotal, anecdotal I beg your pardon, evidence that suggests that uh, consumers were moving out of alco pops or RTDs and ready-to-drinks um, and going into to full bottles of Correct, uh, wine yeah, that's to, they, that's to get what, better value. That's what they're saying now. They're just buying the big full-on bottles, which in one way is worse. Yeah, correct. And, uh, you know, a four-pack of RTDs in some instances is around the $20 to $25 mark, and a bottle of spirits is uh, you can buy on special, I'd suggest to you, around the same sort of price. So that's just switching consumers' behaviour. I wonder maybe with the drink driving rules and the, the expense of dining, yeah, maybe people are buying more uh, because they're drinking more at home. Would that be... Did you have any relevant stats with um, that? No, I don't, but it's probably a... Good, it's, it's probably a uh, true indication of what people are doing because if we are purchasing more and uh, and uh, consuming more alcohol on a week to week basis you suggest that people are using their cars as much as they normally would so what does this sort of information mean to the industry, to the alcohol industry, and, and wine producers, for instance? Yeah, well, I think from wine producers, they have a, uh, they obviously have their branded products, and um, as I said, there's some great value um, branded wines in Australia under twenty dollars. So for those uh, producers, I think it's good news, um, particularly when people are trying new wines um, under that twenty dollar barrier. And what do you think? The, how do you think the government will react to r research like this? Um, I'm sure that's up to the government. I mean, the government have had a, uh, um, you know, a number of inquiries and, and, and looking into things like the Alcopop tax, mm. and I'm sure that's still a work in progress with the government on how uh, we actually do curb a little bit of that in society. Well, it's interesting what restaurants will do because the information about people not really caring about the wine or matching food with wine, and all the sommeliers might find themselves short of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'd suggest to you that at a restaurant it might be a different for the, the food and wine matching is probably a little bit more trendy and yes. uh, something that we'd be more inclined to do when we're out for dinner with friends and, and 
and, and partners. And again, getting back to that chest feeding, particularly on the males, um, making sure that we are um, matching our food and wine while we're out. But um, our research would indicate that's not the case at home. Again, it's, uh, it's buying a little bit smarter and under the $20 um, per bottle. There you go. Very interesting. interesting. Yeah, good to talk to you. Thank you so Thanks, much, Steve. Thanks for having me. And, uh, well, if you're still in winter mode and need a jump start into spring, then get your entries in for our next...